guys, how's it going? So we're working on a fun off-site project today. We're actually at the church where Aaron and I go, and we're gonna be planting up a couple of huge containers. So they recently have redone this whole front area, and these containers, there's one on the other side as well, they used to flank the door. Like if we walk right in here, they used to sit right on the concrete right here, but they've recently put in this really nice awning just to protect everyone who's coming in, you know, from rain and snow that's coming here very soon. Um, and it's just changed the whole outside of the church. So I'm really excited to plant up these containers, which are now nested into the flower beds. And these are massive. So these actually came from the garden center. Um, I think my mom actually, and I, I think she brought these up here and we've planted them several times. Um, but these took, about 14 to 15 cubic feet of soil to fill. Um, and you know, you could on something like this, like plants, especially those plants that you're putting in containers do not need that huge of a soil reservoir, um, unless you're planning on keeping like a large tree or if, you know, I'm using a fluffy arborvita today as my centerpiece. If I was planning on keeping this in as a centerpiece for a long time, I would definitely recommend filling it all the way with soil. That way you have the reservoir. Also, I, I do want to mention that we are right on a really busy road and it's right during harvest time. So there are huge trucks and tractors just like flying in front of me right now, like a truck full of onions. There goes another one. <laughs> so it's really, really loud right now. Um, anyway, back to this, if you're just doing annuals, you know, like annual grasses and pansies and things like that, you could definitely put like some um, old plant cans turned upside down or some kind of filler in the bottom of here because you just don't need that much soil. I mean, that's an enormous amount, but it does help um, with insulating the roots. It helps retain extra moisture. We did run drip already through the bottom of these containers. Um, so it comes up right here. And then I just made sure because this is so large, I kind of wanted to split it into quarters here. There's kind of a visual. I wanted one, one gallon per hour emitter per quadrant. And I think that we got it. Um, it's really nice to use. These are rainbird stakes and you slide these onto the tubing before you put your emitter on. That way you can easily stake it right exactly where you want it to go. Um, so we always start usually with half or one gallon per hour emitters and then adjust from there. And it's just going to hook right into the existing drip system that's in this flower bed. Um, but I do want to add some slow release fertilizer in. And since we're doing quite a number of perennials here, I'm going to use Biotone. I'm just gonna sprinkle some and work it in with my hands. Okay, and then I'm gonna create a well for my fluffy arborvita. And I think this is a fun choice because, you know, I could go with a juniper or even just a regular green arborvita, but you know, there's a green grass, there's some Rosa Sharon's that are green. I just thought it would be fun to do something that had a lot of color. And this fluffy is definitely gonna show up. Okay, so I think that that's a big enough well. Um, I did want to address the size of this arborvita because we just did a video kind of highlighting this plant when I planted it in my own garden. And I told everybody in that video that this grew two to five, two to three feet wide because that is what this tag says. And then we looked up on their website and it said that it grew five to 10 feet wide. Um, and so I contacted the grower and they confirmed that it actually grows three to six feet wide. So everyone was wrong. Um, and we've all made sure to get it right. In fact, they're printing new tags so that uh, no tag will have the incorrect width. Um, but I just thought I would mention that. So in case you were planning on picking up one of these for your garden, you would know exactly how wide it gets. And they do grow anywhere from five to 10 feet tall. You can see that this plant is not very root bound. It's got a nice healthy root system. In fact, I probably don't even need to tease these roots at all. It's kind of a common misconception that you need to break the root ball as much as like maybe I even used to think. Um, but the more I've talked with, you know, people, growers especially, um, unless it's severely root bound, you really don't need to worry so much about it. Okay, I made that well too deep. That's unusual. Usually I have to take out more. Okay, and then before I pack it in with soil, I wanna make sure that I like it from every direction. I'm gonna stand back real quick. Oh, <laughs> that is so pretty. I was a little worried that it was gonna look small. And of course, you know, these pots are massive, but that looks really nice, especially from this direction. You should look from this side. It's glorious. This is how everybody walks up to the front doors. So I think that that is beautiful. So I'm gonna pack that in really well. Soil all the way around the root ball. And then we'll start in with our fluffy fun stuff. Oop, one of my 
tubes just came off. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that that's centered. I always get it off somehow. I don't know what my deal is. It needs to move this way more. Sometimes where the trunk is and where the root ball is, like it doesn't line up perfectly. Like this root ball is not centered or this trunk isn't uh, centered on the root ball. So you have to accommodate for that when you're planting. Oh, there's a big old something, farm equipment. Okay, let me, before I pack this in again, let me look. It needs to tip a little bit. Looks good, I think that's better. Okay, we'll pack it in one more time. Okay, now if you come right over here, I'll show you the other things that I have for this pot. And I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna put it together, but we've got some Hidcoat Superior Lavender, Dichondra Silver Falls for a nice spiller. We've got Tapestry Mix Pansies. There's a Dusty Miller. This one's called Silver Dust. And then there's an Osaka Red Ornamental Cabbage. Um, so I'm not sure exactly, like I said, how I'm gonna put these together. So I think we're gonna set up the camera as we do and just show me planting this up and then I'll, we'll like talk through it in the end. <laughs> they turned out really pretty. I was actually kind of nervous. When we got here, I took a look at the size of the pots and then I thought, oh no, did I bring enough stuff to fill these up? And I did. So I'm really happy about that. I don't think I mentioned that the fluffy arborvita is a zone five through eight. It's usually the rule of thumb to choose an evergreen or any plant that you're trying to winter over in a container to choose one that's rated two zones lower than your current growing zone. So you have a little buffer uh, for wintertime temperatures. And we do garden in a zone five. This is a zone five, but this is a massive container. It's also up next to a building. Um, and we do make sure to keep them on a watering schedule even throughout the winter. And I have pretty good luck wintering things over that way. Um, so I just did want to mention that. And I don't plan on keeping these in here for too awful long. Like we'll have them in here fall through the winter months, maybe for the spring planting, and then we'll probably pop them out and put them in the landscape and do something fresh in the pots. Um, the next thing, the hid coat lavender, I did three of those in each container uh, and they are looking pretty. They actually do need a little water. I haven't watered these in yet. Uh, and these will just kind of sit here. They won't like put on any extra growth, but they all have fresh blooms coming out. And these usually bloom through a good hard frost. So I just thought this would be kind of a fun, different plant to have in a fall container. And then I did three of the Osaka reds that are just kind of uh, divided into thirds and three of the Dusty Miller that gives us that really bright icy blue. And then I did the Dichondra in between the cabbages and then just filled in with pansies everywhere else. We've done the pansies when the containers were up next to the building several times and they usually get absolutely massive. So I do have some like tucked in behind the cabbage so they can kind of fill in the base of the Arborvita here. Um, but I'm just really happy about it. Let's run over to the other pot. It's exactly the same but you can kind of take a look at it because this one has a little bit more of a back to it. Um, and that's the thing about evergreens. Sometimes, you know, it can be a little bit difficult to find two that are exact. You know, finding an exact matching pair of evergreens can be tough. But this was perfect because this one had a little bit more of an opening right here. See that right there? I actually put one extra lavender in this pot just to fill in that little blank spot. But this pot is really only seen from this direction and then around the front here. It's backed up in this corner here, so it worked out really perfectly. Um, so really, all I have left to do is to water these in. Um, and we will fertilize, but probably not as often because we're not watering as often now. Um, the temperatures just dropped yesterday. It was 94. Today's high was 74. It hasn't even reached that yet. Um, and then we're in the 60s and low 70s. So for the foreseeable future anyway. So that takes our watering and fertilizing chores down a whole lot. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this project, just seeing something new and seeing this massive container. We don't um, often plant, I don't think, 
we only have two containers at home that are maybe a, this size a reservoir maybe a tiny bit bigger so it's fun to do something on this scale every once in a while so anyway thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video bye